So in my last video, I had reached 2734 ELO and I just needed to win one more set to reach expert. Well, I went on and I lost a set and then I lost the one after it, but then I won the one after 4-1 and I reached 2746, so I was only four points away. But can you guess what happened next? That's right, I lost another two sets and they, were, they weren't big losses, they were only like two, three, so it was fine. I was still in the 2700s and I was very much in range of expert, but this climb has been really frustrating. It's been keeping me on the edge of my seat. But guys, we finally made it. We finally reached expert and I'm a little bit late to it this season because like I said, I was traveling at the beginning of the season, so I missed a bunch of games. But in today's video, I am going to show you guys the two teams that I used to get there. I should say that I currently prefer the second team that I show you guys in this video. It's working really well for me and I am still using it in the current meta. It is performing very well. So I recommend the second team more over this team, but both of them are very good. Both, however, are slightly weak to Alolan Sandslash, but Alolan Sandslash is manageable. The first team is going to be Shadow Flygon on the lead, and I found Shadow Flygon to be one of the best leads for what I was seeing. So both teams that I'm using are going to have Shadow Flygon on the lead. And for the safe swap, I'm going to use Slurpuff with Flamethrower and Energy Ball. Usually the Slurpuff will draw out a Steel type, and then that's why we have Flamethrower on it. But sometimes it will draw out the Turtonator, and that's just unfortunate. There's not much you can do against that. They are going to farm you down. But at least you'll get the fire type out of the way so that Whimsicott has potential in the back to sweep. Now in my last video, Shadow Flygon was a must because I didn't have the best answers to Azu on my team. However, in this video, I think in both teams, you can probably substitute the Shadow for a non-Shadow if you don't have it. And that's because for both of them, the composition is going to be Flygon with two Azu answers in the back. So you could probably get away with that. And then the second team is going to be Shadow Flygon on the lead with Skarmory on the safe swap and Ferrothorn as a closer. I'll talk about that more later, but let's get into these battles now. We're going to be up against a Shadow Alolan Sandslash first, and that's not great for my Flygon, so I actually have to bait in this matchup in order to have a chance. So what I'll do is I'll throw the Dragon Claw at 6, my opponent will shield, and then I can go for two Scorching Sands. I should be able to reach them at the same pace that my opponent will reach the Ice Punches. So I should be safe there. However, my opponent makes a very impressive catch on the Azumarill and I went for Dragon Claw there because I felt like the Dragon Claw would be enough to take that Alolan Sandslash out, but they catch it on Azu. And before swapping out into Whimsicott, I do build up a little bit of energy on my Flygon so that I have a Dragon Claw stored in case I need it. And this is a lesson I learned. I have to always have a move stored on my Flygon before swapping out and you'll see later in the video why. But anyways, we're able to take the Azu out with the Whimsicott and my opponent is going to go ahead and throw an Ice Punch before I can reach a Grass Knot because they are in Grass Knot range. I'm going to bring Flygon in and immediately go for that Dragon Claw. We get rid of the Alolan Sandslash and my opponent has a Turtonator in the back and I don't think that they are in Dragon Claw range yet. So I swap out of my Flygon with a move, by the way. I have a Dragon Claw Sword. And I'm just going to try to do as much damage as I can with my Slurpuff and then bring Flygon back in and hope that this Dragon Claw KOs. It does. We're able to take that win. GG's to our opponent. Now there's something I should explain there. My opponent can't store two Dragon Pulses, so I had to swap out with a move in order to throw it immediately because what my opponent will try to do is undercharge the overheat on the Fairy type so that they could get one more Incinerate in. And that's going to allow them to have a Dragon Pulse for my Flygon, but because I swapped out with a move, I'm going to be able to win CMP, throw the Dragon Claw, and take them out before they can take us out. Now remember this, this is going to be very important in some of my later matches. And notice in this match, my opponent did the exact same thing. They undercharged the Overheat so that they could get one more Incinerate on my Slurpuff and have a Dragon Pulse for Flygon. Now this is where I started thinking maybe I'll TM the flamethrower off for play rough on my Slurpuff because I was constantly being aligned to Turtonators and flamethrower and energy ball can't really do much to Turtonator because they are going to be four times resisted because of Turtonators dragon and fire typing. So Slurpuff was kind of useless against the Turtonators. 
But anyways, getting back to the match, we are getting destroyed by a Flygon here, and we are Whimsicott. We are resisting every move that this Flygon is throwing at us, but the Scorching Sands really hurt. They're even able to take us out with a Dragon Claw. I do save my final shield for Flygon, but at this point, there's not much I can do because they still have a really full health Azu in the back, and this Azu has access to Ice Speed. And they also had a little bit of energy on the Azu left, so they're going to be able to reach one Ice Beam, take our final shield, and then they'll be able to reach another Ice Beam before I can make it to that Dragon Claw, which I think would have been enough to take this Azu out. But GG's to our opponent, we are going to take a loss there. Now you remember what I said about TMing Playruff onto my Slurpuff because I was running into so many Turtonators? So I go ahead and I do that. Let's try Slurpuff out with Playruff. How bad can it go? Anyways, the next opponent we are going to see is going to be leading another Azu. I was seeing so many Azus on the lead. I safe swap into Slurpuff and... <laughs> nice one, Algorithm. You think you're funny? You think you're so funny, huh? You think you're all that? You think you're so cool? Oh, I see how it's gonna go, Algorithm. I see how it's gonna go. I am this close, this close to expert. I am going to lose my mind. I am... <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> Anyways, we lose this game. Let's have a moment of silence for the charge TMs I'm gonna have to use on this Slurpuff for absolutely no reason. Moving on to the next match, we are going to see a really nice lead of Shadow Magnezone. I guess the game was feeling really sorry for me at this point. And then my opponent safe swaps a Weezing. I'm going to stay in with my Flygon. I kind of have to. This thing has Sludge and it will absolutely demolish my backline of Double Fury. So I'm going to stay in and I baited on the first move because Weezing can actually flip this. I'm going to go ahead and invest both of my shields into Flygon. At least we were able to shield the overheat successfully. They did go for the sludge on the first move and I probably shouldn't have shielded that. But they are going to bring Azu back in. And I make a mistake here. I thought I'd bring Whimsicott in to draw the uh, Magnezone back out. But that is a mistake because Moonblast is actually not enough to KO this Magnezone. If I had brought Slurpuff in, I'd be able to reach a second Flamethrower, take the Magnezone out. So why did we put Flamethrower on the Slurpuff if I'm not going to bring it in against the Steel type? I really should have brought the Slurpuff in against this. But they are going to be able to wild charge my Slurpuff and at this point there is nothing I'm going to be able to do. I misplayed that and I take that loss. On to the next match, I am going to see, guess what, another Azu lead. Gonna immediately swap into my Slurpuff, and my opponent is deciding to stay in. So I'm gonna throw the energy ball in the middle of their bubble so that they don't catch. I'm able to land it, and it does almost 50% of their health, which is gonna be good for us. Any damage I can do on this Azu is gonna be good because then I can take care of it with the Flygon more easily. My opponent is going to bring a Slurpuff in now here, and I should be able to reach two moves against the Slurpuff. I think I should just be going Energy Ball to potentially drop their defense. I'm going to be able to reach a third move and my opponent is going to go ahead and invest both shields into their Slurpuff. However, they're going to have so much energy and they're going to be able to reach two Energy Balls on this Flygon. So I shield the first one, but I managed to catch the next Energy Ball on my Whimsicott and I should be able to reach a Grass Knot before the Slurpuff can reach a move. So, gonna go for this Grass Knot, take the Slurpuff out, and my opponent brings Azu back in. Because they did this, I am expecting them to have a Flygon in the back because uh, Whimsicott is going to be walling Flygon. The Scorching Sands are going to hurt as we saw in a match before, but we are going to be able to take that when my opponent goes ahead and top lefts without shields that Flygon is not going to be able to take care of the last two Pokemon that I have left. On to the next match, we are going to see Escav on the lead. Now, Escav actually gives Flygon a hard time. I'm gonna go immediately for the Scorching Sands, hoping for an attack drop. I don't get it, but here I'm expecting my opponent to go Acid Spray. I do shield anyways because I got Aerial Aced before, so I got kind of scared. I shielded, it was Acid Spray. I'm gonna bring Slurpuff in now and they Acid Spray me again, but I am going to be able to reach the Flamethrower and they let the Escav go. This is good, I wanted that out of the way. Now my opponent brings in a Lucario and I'm going to go for another Flamethrower. This should take their final shield. But again, they are going to be able to farm us down completely and have a lot of energy. Now I'm going to go ahead and shield the Blaze Kick here. I should be able to reach a Scorching Sands before they can make it to another Blaze Kick. However, my opponent catches it on Azu. 
but I need to leave with a move stored on Flygon so that I could take care of Lucario. So I build up to the Scorching Sands before swapping out and then I bring Whimsicott in. I'm gonna build up as much energy as I can, go to 100 energy before I take it out with a Grass Knot. And this is going to force Lucario to throw their energy on Whimsicott because if I reach that Moonblast, I'll be able to take him out. But because they throw all their energy here, they're not going to have a move stored for Flygon. I'm going to be able to throw the Scorching Sands on the Lucario and take them out. And if they had a move stored on Lucario for Flygon, they would win CMP and they would be able to take that game. Moving on to the next match, we're going to see a Shadow Magnezone lead and my opponent safe swaps into Azumarill. Now, later when I change my team, when my opponent safe swaps into Azumarill, I'll stay in with Flygon and I'll try to get as much energy as I can before they throw a move, and then I'll swap into my Ferrothorn. But we're still working with this team, so I'm gonna bring Whimsicott in, I just need two Grass Knots to take it out. We get the Azu out of the way and then my opponent brings Magnezone back in. I'm going to be able to get a Moonblast off, but they're going to go ahead and shield it because they are Shadow, they're going to take a lot of damage from it. However, this Magnezone is able to farm Whimsicott down and have a lot of energy for the Flygon. They go for a Mirror Shot and it does way too much damage and we get an attack drop. So I'm going to go ahead and shield the next one. And yikes, my opponent brings in a Shadow Granbull. It did so much damage with that charm and I didn't react quickly. However, I bring in Slurpuff. I'm able to reach a move and take their final shield, but they farm us down and they have a move here, but for some reason they don't throw it. I'm not sure if Granbull would have won CMP, but I'm able to go for that Scorching Sands, and then we CMP tie on the Dragon Claw against this Magnezone. They go for another Mirror Shot and they get the attack drop. Now will this debuffed Dragon Claw be enough to take this Magnezone out? It is! We're able to take that win. GG's to our opponent. That was getting really close. And with this 4-1, I was able to get really close to Expert. I was just four points away, but as I said at the beginning, I did go on and lose the next two sets, unfortunately. On to the next match, guess the lead, very predictable, it is going to be Azumarill. I'm immediately going to swap into Slurpuff and my opponent lets me get to the energy ball before swapping into whatever they have in the back. Gonna throw it and then this Azumarill is going to throw a move here. I'm gonna let it go, whatever it is, I'm okay with it landing. It is going to be a play rough and then they bring an Ascav in. They are going to have to shield this flamethrower and I might be able to get to another one if they don't throw a move. But my opponent goes for an Aerial Ace and takes the Slurpuff out. Now, they're going to reach another move before I can get to a Scorching Sands on my Flygon. It is going to be Aerial Ace again, and then I'm going to reach the Scorching Sands, and this should be enough to take the Escav out. My opponent is going to bring Azumarill back in, and at this point, I've decided to just commit to taking the Azu out with my Flygon, so I'm going to shield the Ice Beam here, and then I am going to get a little bit of energy before throwing that Scorching Sands. We're able to take the Azu out and then they have a Flygon in the back. I'm just gonna take their final shield out of the way with this Dragon Claw and then I force them to throw on CMP here because I also was going to reach another Dragon Claw. Now they don't have a lot of energy and I can bring Whimsicott in. Once my opponent sees it, they know what to do. They top left. GG's to our opponent. On to the next game, we are going to see a very tricky lead for this team. It is going to be a Alolan Sand Slash. Now, the way I like to play this out, as I mentioned before, is I will build up to the Scorching Sands and then I'll bait with a Dragon Claw. If I don't bait, I won't be able to win that matchup. However, my opponent attempts to catch whatever I'm going to throw on their Azu. So I'm going to bring Whimsicott in. I still have a lot of energy stored on Flygon. I just need to go for two Grass Knots. I'm going to be able to CMP tie on the second Grass Knot against this Azu so that they can't throw that Ice Beam on Whimsicott to take us out. And then I'm going to be able to reach another Grass Knot on the Sand Slash. Now they might be in Dragon Claw range here, but I am going to go for a Mud Shot in case my opponent tries to catch. They throw the Ice Punch and then they bring a Tapu Fini in. I'm going to go for a Scorching Sands to get the Tapu Fini weak, but they shield. I'm going to go for another Scorching Sands. Let's see if my opponent decides to shield or not. They don't, I'm gonna build up a little bit of energy and then catch the Surf on my Slurpuff. Now here's a mistake I made. I shouldn't have thrown the Scorching Sands on this Tapu Fini because I'll be able to reach an energy ball on Slurpuff regardless. So I'll be able to take the Tapu Fini out with the Slurpuff. I should have saved energy on my Flygon and swapped out with a move because now I was able to take their final shield with Slurpuff, but my opponent built to back-to-back -back Ice Punches. If I had that Dragon Claw, I might have been able to take this Alolan Sand Slash out. 
Again, I said this earlier in the video, it is very important to swap out a Flygon with a move stored. Oh look, another Azu, but I bet you if I put a grass type in the lead, I would see so many fire types. Anyways, we are going to safe swap into Slurpuff. Okay, let's see now how Slurpuff with Flamethrower performs against a Registeel. I'm gonna let this move go. It shouldn't KO us, but it is a flash cannon. Now let's find out if two Flamethrowers are enough to KO Registeel. Nope. No, they aren't. They live with very little HP and they're gonna be able to reach a flash cannon on our Flygon as well. I'm gonna have to shield that. And then they bring Azu back in. I'm gonna go for our Scorching Sands and we managed to get an attack drop. Now I catch whatever the move is on my Whimsicott. It is going to be Ice Beam, but because they got the attack drop, I was okay with catching that move and drawing out whatever they have in the back. It is going to be an Excadrill. We CMP tie on the Rock Slide. Thankfully, it doesn't take us out. We're able to land a Grass Knot as well. They do not shield the Grass Knot and it almost KOs the Excadrill. Now my opponent stops tapping there so that I don't get a lot of energy on my Flygon. I'm able to do one Mud Shot and take the Excadrill out. And now I just need to land one Scorching Sands on this Azu. I'm gonna go ahead and bait on the second move we're able to take their final shield and then we can go for another Scorching Sands and hope that this takes the Azu out. Does it take it out? It KOs and we were able to win against an Azu that had two shields left where we had one shield left with a Flygon. GG's to our opponent. On to the next match, I'm going to show you why it's so important to swap out a Flygon with a move stored. My opponent is going to lead Turtonator into our Flygon really nice lead for us, and then they bring in an Escav. I'm going to go for the Scorching Sands, take a shield from them, and then I swap out. Now here I couldn't really swap out with a move because they would be able to go for Drill Run, and then I would end up shielding my Flygon anyways. So I bring Slurpuff in, I take the Drill Run on Slurpuff, and then they let me land the Flamethrower on Escav and take them out. And then they bring Turtonator back in. Now they go for a full farm down with Turtonator. So they're gonna have a Dragon Pulse stored and then they just need one more Incinerate to reach another Dragon Pulse. So I have to use both shields to protect Flygon here. Now my opponent brings in Azu and this is where I mess up. They've only done three bubbles when I throw that Scorching Sands. So I should have done a couple extra mud shots before swapping out. Then I would have had a Dragon Claw stored on my Flygon. This is very important. I need that move stored in case my opponent has a Dragon Pulse loaded for Flygon. That way I can CMP tie with the Turtonator and take them out before they can take us out. But instead, Whimsicott gets farmed down. They have a Dragon Pulse for a Flygon. I'm not going to be able to reach a move and they take that win. GG's to our opponent. Moving on to the final match that I'm going to play with this team, we see another Azu lead. How many Azu leads have we gotten so far in this video? I lost count. Now my opponent attempted to catch the energy ball on their Registeel, but I waited to see if they would make a catch. Now I have so much energy on Slurpuff and I'm going to be able to go for these flamethrowers and they are going to absolutely hurt the Registeel. They are able to make it to a Zap Cannon and they don't get the debuff. Let's see now if this flamethrower is going to be enough to take the Registeel out. It is not. We needed one more Fairy Wind to take that Registeel out. Even with an energy lead and Fairy Wind damage, I also wasn't able to take the Registeel out with the Slurpuff. So I think we've seen enough examples by now. Slurpuff is not a Registeel counter. Now up against Azu, I've decided that I'm going to stay in with Flygon. Because they are a shield down, I'll be able to take it out with the Scorching Sands. So I double shield and I build up as much energy as I can before the Azu can reach another move. We take it out with the Scorching Sands, they let it go, and they have a Lucario in the back. I know I can reach a Scorching Sands and a Dragon Claw, so I bait with the Dragon Claw. We take their final shield, and then with one HP and a Dream, the Flygon is able to KO the Lucario. We don't even let our opponent see what's in the back. Now, while I did have some nice games in the last two sets that I played, they were still negative, so I ended up changing my team based on what I was seeing in the meta. Now we're gonna run Shadow Flag on lead with Skarmory on the safe swap. Skarmory because it can draw Turtonator and at least hit for neutral. Now when I started running this team, I noticed that a lot of people were safe swapping Azu into Flygon. I would take advantage of this and build up so much energy on Flygon to make the game unplayable for them because Flygon with energy is so scary. And then I'd bring Ferrothorn in and absolutely wall the Azu and take it out and also leave the matchup with quite a bit of energy on Ferrothorn. But yeah, if you see someone swap Azu into your Flygon, don't swap right away. 
build up as much energy as you can before taking a move, and then bring Ferrothorn in. Don't let them get to the move though so that you don't have to give up a shield. I did this in the game running in the background and I ended up having so much energy on Flygon for that wheezing and my opponent brings in a Togetic. I have Skarmory in the back which is absolutely going to wall the Togetic so my opponent top left. On to the next match, another nice lead of Magnezone and my opponent save swaps into Azu, gonna take so much advantage of this and then swap into Ferrothorn and then they just top left. Like I said, you get that much energy on, on Flygon? That is pretty scary. On to the next match, we are going to see a Lucario on the lead. Now, I believe Lucario will win CMP over Flygon. However, my opponent goes ahead and catches the Scorching Sands on Weezing. Very interesting choice. I think they meant to tap the Azu, but then they bring in Azu and they are going to be met with our Ferrothorn. I probably should have left with a little bit of energy on Flygon before swapping out. But I bring in Ferrothorn and I am going to try to leave this matchup with some energy stored. That way I could reach a Thunder on Lucario. Now my opponent goes ahead and saves their Azu. Probably they want to use Azu to take care of the Flygon. But it doesn't have that much HP left so I don't really think it will be that useful. They go ahead and they shield the Thunder on Lucario. I'm going to go ahead and shield my Flygon because I want to be able to reach that Scorching Sands. And they don't have any shields left so I know I'm going to be able to land this take the Lucario out, and then my opponent has a very low HP Azu in the back that I can easily take care of with Skarmory. So they go ahead and top left, GG's to our opponent. On to the next match, we are going to be met with an Escav lead. Now Escav lead is not a comfortable lead for Flygon. Now I've started playing this lead a little bit differently. Here I went immediately for the Scorching Sands, but what I've started doing is baiting with uh, Dragon Claw because my opponents are almost always going to shield. Also, they're almost always going to bait with Acid Spray, but a lot of the times I have gotten hit with the harder hitting move, and unfortunately they do take out my Flygon. Now I did save Flygon with a little bit of energy in the back, and then I swapped in Skarmory and took whatever energy the Escav had, and they go ahead and they swap into Azu. I'm just going to go for Sky Attacks against this Azu. I did go for a Brave Bird on the second move, and I'm going to let them take me out with a Play Rough. Now I can bring Ferrothorn in and start building up energy. If I reach a Thunder on the Escav, I should be able to take it out. But I go for a uh, Power Whip here instead. That puts him in the red in a range where I could probably uh, Bullet Seed down. I'm not sure. But they swap out anyways into Weezing. And here I just call that they're going to go for Sludge. Actually, they only did uh, five, so I know it's Sludge. Or they did six. I wasn't counting. But uh, they didn't do enough for an Overheat, so I know Shielded that. On the next move, they bait with a Sludge, so they take our first shield, and then I know that this one is not going to be enough, and Sludge is going to be resisted because of Ferrothorn's steel typing, so I let that go as well, and then I'm able to reach a Thunder on the Weezing, they let that go, and then I Bullet Seed the Escav down. I was actually surprised that two Bullet Seeds was enough to take it out. GG's to our opponent. Moving on to the final match of the video, and at this point I had already gotten the four wins I needed to secure getting to Expert, so... This match, it didn't really matter to me if I won or not. However, we are going to be met in the lead with Azumarill. Again, I'm going to do as much damage as I can to it with my Flygon, and then I'm going to try to catch a move on Skarmory, and at the same time, I'm going to try to draw out if this person has a Turtonator in the back. I'm going to draw it out with the Skarmory. And we managed to draw it out, again, because we are running an ABB line. I'm going to need to draw the Fire-type out. I know it's not the most ideal matchup, but at least I have moves that are going to hit for neutral. I go for a Brave Bird, they shield it. I also wanted to drop my uh, defense so that they could take me out faster. Now I bring Flygon back in and I build up to two Dragon Claws so that I could win CMP on the next Dragon Pulse that my opponent is going to throw. We're able to take the Turtonator out, but my opponent has an Escav in the back and Escav is going to be so bad for Ferrothorn. But at least we have the Thunder that can hit for neutral and they're going to go ahead and farm us down, but my opponent almost did something here that would have given me a win condition. If only Flygon won CMP, I would have been able to throw that Dragon Claw and it might have KO'd that Escav. But they had enough energy on their Escav for a move, so they were able to take our Flygon out. And after that, I did continue using this team, so I did climb with it a little bit more. It is a pretty decent team, so I can highly recommend it to you guys. And with that, we got to Expert. And that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry it was a long one. I know that I had so many battles to share with you guys. 
But I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Let me know if you use any of these teams and if they work out for you. And if you guys enjoy my videos, please consider subscribing. Maybe leave a like. It helps me out so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.